Welcome to our live training session number 10. We're going to be taking a look at tuning a Mazda Miata using a plug and play Mega Squirt Box. Let's jump into some details about this vehicle. So it's a 1992 Mazda Miata with a 1999 engine swap in it. So it also has a Rotrex supercharger kit that's been fitted as well as a header back exhaust. It has GT500 fuel injectors, a drop-in fuel pump, and an AEM X-Series wideband, and we're going to be doing the tuning on 93 octane. So we have a pretty basic first example here for our live training sessions with our Mega Squirt, but this is going to be great. We can really illustrate stripping down all of the extra complicated things with the Mega Squirt and really take a look at doing our fuel and ignition timing tuning as well as taking a look at the core tables. I'll be walking you through all that in this live training session. So let's jump into the first part here so we can grade our base calibration and get started. Welcome to our live training here with our Mazda Miata using a DIY plug and play Mega Squirt box. So let's jump into our tuner studio now so we can begin creating our base calibration file and get online and get started. So jumping in here to our tuner studio software, we're gonna go to create new project. This is the first step you have to do when you're working with any Mega Squirt project. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna be labeling my project name, something distinctive so I know when I'm looking through my directory of different folders and files, I know what's gonna be associated with this vehicle. So I'm gonna be labeling this one EPA, oops, Miata. And then next we need to detect the firmware that we're using. So different boxes will have different firmware and depending on how old the firmware is or how new it is, they're all gonna vary. So we need to detect that so it saves it in our project so that when we go to connect with our box at any given time, it's going to recognize what the firmware is going to be on that box and then it's gonna connect. It's not gonna go through this process again. So we'll go here to detect and give it a second and it should be finding that we, uh, we find the port that we're on as well as the firmware that we're using. We can see right now it's recognized my USB that's been plugged into my laptop and I'm plugged into my Mega Squirt box and the vehicle's powered on. So um, we're seeing that it detects it. Now we can look here, it's an MS2 extra release 3.2.5. That's gonna be the firmware version that we're using. Now there's a lot newer firmware that's available right now. I think we're uh, the one that I've seen was 3.4.2 uh, is the current right now. Now I'm not gonna be doing an upgrade on this, even though this is pretty dated here. The first four digits here, it's gonna represent the year, 2013. So it's about six year old firmware. I am not going to update it because this is a generation one mega squirt box in here or a generation one uh, DIY plug and play box. That is uh, something that the board design is, is definitely different than the newest generation. And I'm not sure if the newer firmware will be compatible or not. I tried to go ahead before I did this video here and I tried to do a firmware update, but it gave me a bunch of errors and I didn't want to compromise the Mega Squirt board and create all kinds of problems. So I'm not gonna be upgrading the firmware in this to the latest version because this has such an old board in it and I can't get verification that the firmware is gonna become a problem or not. So I'm not going to risk doing any kind of damage to the actual board or any kind of uh, programming issues. So we're gonna leave the older firmware on right now. We're gonna go here and just accept it. And then we're gonna go net, hit the next button here and we're gonna move into our next screen. We'll leave all the default values in here. This is fine. Click next. We're gonna go and let it go and test the port. You can see it successfully tested the port, recognizes it. Click next. And now we can see we have our dashboard that's gonna be popping up here. Now we created custom dashboards in our training course and I showed you how to do that. However, the firmware that we're using is going to have to match the firmware that we created the pages in. And because this is an older firmware, what we've created